All right. Well, hello. So we are going to continue with our chapter on acceleration, and we're going to do the last section of this chapter, which involves free fall. So the question is, do heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones? Well, as objects fall, they bump into particles of air. And so some objects are affected more than others based on their shape and things like that. But free fall is the motion of a body when air resistance is negligible, so we're not going to count air resistance, and the action can be considered due to gravity alone. So the only thing affecting these objects is gravity. Okay, and gravity is the same for all objects. So in this case, all objects would fall at the same rate. Well, Galileo discovered that neglecting the effect of the air, which would be air resistance, all objects in free fall have the same acceleration. And so this acceleration is denoted as gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's the acceleration of an object in free fall that basically results from just Earth's gravity. And so that's why everything falls at the same rate in free fall. Gravity can be negative or positive depending on the coordinate system, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The other thing to keep in mind is that when it says an object is in free fall, you should automatically assume whoops, that this is your acceleration. They're probably not going to tell you it's 9.8 meters per second squared, but anytime you see free fall, that's what you should assume. And you could put a, that on your note card if you want. All right, so let's look at an example. So we have this ball being thrown upward, so I'm giving it an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. It's going to go up until it hits the highest point at which velocity becomes zero, and then it's going to come back down. But as you can see, for each of these points, our acceleration is the same because our object's in free fall. So this is a constant acceleration, which means if we look at a velocity time graph, our slope would be constant. So if we plotted these points, we have, um, let's see, at time 0, we have 20. And then at time 1, we're at like 10, and then 0.4, and then negative 9.4, and then negative 19.2. You can see that we have a constant slope that's also negative. And if we found the slope, that will come out to 9.8. And so that's our acceleration. So at the top, acceleration does not equal zero at the top of an object's path of motion. But the velocity is zero. And so because it's changing, that still means that you have an acceleration. So if we did like a displacement time graph, say we started at whoop, displacement of zero, basically what you would see is kind of a parabola shape, okay, where the displacement would be zero, and then here you can see our slope is zero, and remember that represents velocity. So at the top of an object's path of motion, the velocity is zero, and then we're coming back down. So two different graphs. Okay, so free fall is used in a lot of places, mainly on roller coasters and things like that. So free fall rides consist of three parts. We have the ride at the top, the part that I hate personally. Uh, the momentary suspension, no, maybe that, that is the part I hate the most. Actually, I, I just hate the whole thing, but that's my least favorite. And then the plunge downward, that, that doesn't really sound very fun either. So we've got this up to the top, momentary suspension, plunge to your death on the way down. Okay, so here are your check for understanding questions for section three about free fall. So number one, what is free fall? If an object is in free fall, what does this mean about its acceleration? Number two, you are talking with your friends at lunch about physics, of course. Caleb says, an object stops for a split second at the top of its path of most motion, so its acceleration is zero at that point. Why is Caleb wrong? And number three, what are the three parts for a free fall type of amusement park ride, and which part is your favorite? Okay, so we'll try these on your own, and we'll discuss them in class. Have a good day.